Good morning everybody and a happy new year to you all. Our reading this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 to 14. It's titled No Confidence in the Flesh. Further my brothers and sisters rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his Spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on, towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. Amen. Good evening, my friends, and may I wish you a happy new year. Of course, we've started the new year with the devastating news of another national lockdown. However, I believe that if we hold on and really take seriously what we're being asked to do, that 2021 is going to be the year when we finally move on from COVID-19. And indeed, I pray therefore that we would all have the strength given to us by God to be able to remain in obedience to that which we are being asked to do. So I was ha wishing you a happy new year. This is also uh, me coming back to you for our little Wednesday night thoughts together to help set you up for some personal study or for some group study should you be meeting in different ways. Now, typically last Sunday, as the first Sunday in the year, we focused on what it is we want to be in this coming year. As followers of Jesus, what are to be our aspirations? And the passage that we've heard read, I expounded on, on Sunday, we looked at letting go of things, trusting in God's way, pursuing the Christ who leads us in to God's way, and as we pursue, therefore, we grow in the character and image of God, the image in which we are created. Now, I don't want to go on too much. One of the problems, I think, when we come to the new year and who of us hasn't made endless New Year's resolutions. And then when we come to the following year, we realise that we haven't done a lot of those resolutions. I mean, a great one, everybody does it, is we join the gym. <laughs> and I don't know how many times I've heard or known people to join the gym and start with a great flourish in January, only for it not to be the case for the rest 
of the year and then you're still paying your direct debit but getting no benefit because you're not engaging with the process of going to the gym. It's almost like we, we feel we have to make resolutions about things we want to achieve. But I wonder whether we need to have a look at Christian-based resolutions, which I think have to be more to do with character and being than they are about doing and achieving. We talked, didn't we, on Sunday about Paul letting go of the trophies that he had pride in in the past. The very things that, when he clung to them, produced a hatred of those in the way of Jesus. And I commented that if your supposed righteousness leads you to a moral superiority, which means you, you can persecute those made in the image of God, then you must find another kind of way in this world because that way is not the way of peace and it's certainly not the way of Christ. So we could ask ourselves tonight, in looking back on 2020, what are some of the things that we perhaps held too dearly, that in hindsight now polluted our character, polluted our Christian witness? What were the things that we fought with other people over? What were the things that we gossiped to other people about? What were the things that were corrupting our character, our being in Christ. And ought we not to let go of those things? Should our aspiration this year as followers of Jesus to be to trust more what God says to us through Christ than what our theological systems have told us, God says to us through Christ. Do we perhaps need a year where we throw out the old things we've put pride in to rediscover the new thing that we once had, but it has become clouded with so many issues? What is it we need to embrace or work towards this year? What do we need really to pursue as God's people? And I don't want that to be, we need to pursue a church that grows numerically, that has this work going on, that work, that work. I think we have to be a people that ask the deeper question of what do we want to be? What do we want to pursue in terms of being this year? Because then I think as we pursue being, what it means to be Christ followers, what it means to put God's kingdom first, then I think God will add things to us. Perhaps they're unexpected, unanticipated. But I think sometimes when we go for the what we want adding before what we want to be, we never get the thing that we want adding. And even if we do, if the character and being is not there, we hardly handle the things that we really dream and desire. Of course, I want a thriving church filled with the Holy Spirit where when we sing, there's there's this sense of hearts being open, where everybody engages in small groups. Everybody is interested in becoming disciples of Jesus. I want a church where Haywood recognises us, sees us as a centre of good news and hope in the town. But unless my being is one of love and one of hope and one of grace and one of mercy, then none of that, is going to happen and if it does it will be tainted with a an impurity because it will be too agenda driven it might be that I get a big church for my ego rather than surrendering in self-sacrificial love to the needs of the community and God adding on the basis of my sacrificial work in Christ. So how are we going to pursue Jesus? How are we going to be more Christ-like 
this year. And how are we going to encourage one another when that kind of growth begins to appear? I think there is a guarantee that if we let go of the things that we put our pride in, if we trust a new way of God in Jesus Christ, if we therefore pursue that way, then we will grow. But it's always good as part of God's hope-filled community to be able to say to one another, grace is growing in your life. Hope seems to be flourishing. Joy seems to be there. Resilience when there is suffering seems to be coming to the fore. I think we do need to become a people that in grace document growth in others. And I think too we have to be kind to ourselves in acknowledging where we're growing too. I think sometimes we're too fearful of pride and too fearful of ego. But I think there comes a time where we have to love ourselves enough to affirm ourselves too in our own growth in God. Now, it is helped along when somebody else recognises what isn't obvious to you. But let's also get better this year. And a kind of self-care and a self-love that isn't grounded in pride or ego, but is it grounded in looking at self in the mirror of, of God's image in Jesus and realising that, yes, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is working within me. Yes, I did forgive that person I couldn't forgive last year. Yes, I did move on from bitterness. And even if I've still got bitterness about something, yes, it's less than last year. Let's start to get better at loving ourselves. It's not easy, is it, when we do come up against challenges. Um, we sometimes codified, aren't we, or educated, I don't know why, to look at our failures. But let's start to look at where we are growing. Even if it's just small growth, it's worth noting and pouring the water of encouragement on that growth so it grows even more. So let's be a people who are kind to one another, gracious with our words to one another, but equally gracious to ourselves as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. So let's go over to some simple questions now, which I hope as you expand upon, might become more challenging, but not challenging in a way that are designed to make you feel smaller about yourself, but are designed to encourage you to aspire to be the great person that God has indeed created you to be. Letting go. What are the things that defined us in the past year? as people and as a church? What are the good things we need to keep hold of? What are the things we ought to let go of? How can we help one another let go of things that may define us but somehow hurt others? Trust we are called to trust in the righteousness of God in Jesus. But what does that mean? How can we live our lives in that righteousness? What does that call us to be? Pursuing. What kind of people do we want to be this year? How would we like the town to speak of us? How can we ensure the town of Haywood sees and hears us? Grow. Where would you like to grow this year? How 
would you like the church to grow? So many things for us to work through tonight or to be meditating and chewing over during the week before we meet together this coming Sunday. I pray for myself and I pray also for those who have joined in to participate tonight that we would be a people that learn to let go of things that can be destructive. And that in letting go and opening our hands, we can receive in trust what God has for us in this next year. And as we receive that, we can begin to pursue what God has called us for in Christ. And as we do that, we can be a people that grow in love and hope and faith this year. The invitation is open to us all to lay down our burdens and to come and drink afresh from that place of wholeness and healing, which is Jesus himself. Let us take advantage of the opportunity that grace affords us today. And I look forward to meeting with you again on Sunday as we make promises together about what kind of church and what kind of people we will be in this world. God bless you all and see you on Sunday.